Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Career Expo. Today's focus at this time is going to be on transportation and logistics. My name is Chris Poole. I am an employment and training specialist with the Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development, and I'm focused and stationed in the Sheboygan County Job Center. With us today, we have Jim Irwin, Irvin, excuse me, and he is working at Lakeshore Technical College. I'm sure all all of you are very familiar with LTC and he works in the supply chain manufacturing management and I'm guessing he is an instructor. Our other panelist today is not yet joined. His name is Jeremiah Novak and he is from Novak's Service Center. So when he joins us, then we'll bring him into the discussion. But let's bring Jim on the line right now. I know that he has a PowerPoint that he is going to use as he talks and shares information with you about transportation and logistics. Jim, over to you. All right, thank you very much. So hello, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to join you today and talk with you. So as stated, I am an instructor at LTC. I teach supply chain. So when we talk about transportation and logistics, it all falls into supply chain. And we're gonna talk about that some more. So I've been at LTC for about five years now. I teach a real lot of um, different types of courses, supervision, manufacturing management, things like that. So I'm gonna get into my PowerPoint right away so we can take a look at it. So give me a second here while I share my screen. And get my slideshow running. All right, so hopefully everyone can see this okay. So we talk about transportation and logistics. And as I said, it falls into a much broader category called supply chain. And supply chain, anything that you eat, anything you drive, any services you receive has to do with supply chain. And, and this has been a uh, very extremely extraordinary time for supply chain. If you think about the empty shelves when you go to the grocery store and you think about the difficulty in getting some of this stuff and also how supply chain is changing very rapidly. And one of the major changes that is going through is the amount of stuff that people buy online, partly because they can't find it locally and partly because they do what's called window shopping. So you go to a store, you find what you want, you write down all the information on it, and you go online and buy it there because either it's cheaper, you don't have to leave the house again to buy it, whatever the situation is. So supply chain, if we use the example of um, a piece of cheese, supply chain covers everything from what the farmer put on the field to begin with, all the way through the cows eating the grass or feed, to the equipment used for milking the cattle, to the trucks used to haul the milk, to the processing of the, of the milk and the cheese, the distribution out to the customer. So supply chain covers everything. And whether it's a, a product or a service, it's still supply chain. So we, we're gonna talk about logistics and transportation. And sometimes those are used interchangeably, but they're actually not. So when we talk about logistics, it's the management of the inward and outward transportation of goods from the manufacturer to the end user. So everything that takes place in bringing materials in, as far as scheduling it, the production of, and, and I'll use probably manufacturing more than I will service during my discussion, but everything that's produced has to do with logistics. You know, when are we gonna make it? How are we gonna make it? How much are we gonna make? That's all part of the logistics. And then planning the distribution to send it out to the customer or a warehouse, whatever it is. Transportation is the actual physical movement of goods. So when you talk about moving the materials, it could, and we're gonna look at this in just a few minutes, but it could be by truck, it could be by rail, it could be by sea, there's a lot of different options. So we're gonna take a look at that. But even though we use those interchangeably, in reality, they're two different parts of the supply chain. So logistics. You're obtaining, producing, and distributing materials and, and producing quantities to an end user. So it's exactly what I said when I gave the cheese example. Someone needs to figure out how much you're going to make. So in, in my work, I've helped uh, some of the local cheese companies. And some of the local cheese companies have cheese that's been in their inventory for two years. So you think about it. They're trying to guess two years out 
what cheeses people are going to want. And then you throw in things like the tariffs that the government put on them. And when Donald Trump was president, he got into, oh, let's just say a little bit of a war with France about tariffs on cheese. And, and so it really affected the local cheese companies who are trying to expand their business by going internationally. Logistics includes planning for the most efficient and effective storage and transportation of goods and services. So storage is a major part of it. Um, I always tell my students in my classes, if you're planning on starting a business, don't tie all your money up in inventory because if something changes, you have no capital to, to move from that. So you have to be careful about how much you're gonna make of what. Uh, logistics has added benefits and functions that are different from transportation services. Logistics managers need to make decisions based on packaging, containerization, documentation, a lot of different things. So in the past, I was a plant manager for mainly commercial bakeries for the last, oh, I guess 30 years or so. And before that, I worked at a foundry and different things. But every place that I worked at, there's somebody who has to sit there and decide what are we going to make? How much of it are we going to make? How are we going to get all the materials in? And like I said earlier, that became much more stressful during the COVID, uh, you know, which we're continuing in, but it becomes much more stressful. Um, when we look at ships, we'll talk some more about the evergreen getting stuck in the Suez Canal. <clears throat> logistics jobs. So what kind of jobs would the logistics have? Well, you could be a production scheduler. So I've talked about this a few times. A person who sits down and says, we're going to make this many mozzarellas and this many cheddars. And so they're actually figuring out what we're going to make. A purchaser. A purchaser is a, a very good job. You're buying stuff. Purchasers are going absolutely crazy nowadays trying to source this stuff. Um, look at the, the trouble we had with the N95 masks when COVID first started and you couldn't find them anymore. They couldn't make enough of them. The government actually had companies convert to make masks and make respirators. So a purchaser is a, is a very important job. You need to find out the best quality for the lowest price. And then materials manager. So someone who's taking care of all the different materials that come in. So they find out where they want to store it at. Um, you have to have it easy to get back. So people ask, well, are these hands-on jobs? Are they office jobs? What kind of jobs are they? For logistics, they're more the office type job, but there's also some hands-on. For example, if you're the materials manager, you're going to have to do inventory. And when you do inventory, you go out on the floor and you physically count the materials that are there to make sure that you have enough for what you need and you have the right amount that you, that you wanted to start with. So here's some qualities and skills for logistics professionals. So if you're thinking about going into logistics, here's some things that would be beneficial if you have these abilities. Ability to see the big picture. Sometimes you have to look at what you're going to do if this doesn't work. And adaptability goes right in hand with that. You know, if, if you can't find something, what are you going to use in its place? So in the bakery, for example, we made raisin bread. And we had specific raisins for specific accounts. But sometimes you had to adapt because you couldn't get one specific type of raisin. So you'd have to use another one. Then you need to figure out, do you cut the raisins? Do you add more raisins? What do you do? Call them under pressure. Throughout your life, you'll find that it doesn't do any good to get excited and get nervous and get worried about stuff. Just stay calm under pressure. You know, think about what the worst thing that could happen, put that aside, and then just move on. So stay calm under pressure. Effective problem-solving skills. If you're going to be in logistics, your job is to look for problems, you know, and solve those problems before they become major issues. Honesty. Um, if you're a purchaser, for example, and, I, and I've seen this happen, unfortunately, you need to be very honest because there's always a temptation for you to buy from another company who may try and lure you to do that by offering you a bribe. Well, it, it's not only illegal, but you, know, you, you certainly don't want to get that, that um, stigma about you that you're not honest. So always be honest. Continually seeking improvement. No matter where you go or what you do, whatever company you work for, even if it's not logistics, you have to continually seek to improve. If you don't improve and you stagnate, 
then you, you'll find that your business starts to drop off. So continuous improvement is a, is a real key term. Proficient in project management. Yeah, you have a lot of different things going on and, and you can term them as a project, but there's a lot of different things going on. Ability to manage and release stress. So manager stress, whether you push it down. Um, one of my favorite stories is I went to take over as plant manager of this place. And as I walked around the outside of the plant, there's this four by four planted in the ground in the middle of nowhere. And it's like, well, what is that for? And he said, the last plant manager used to come out of the baseball bat and beat the heck out of that post when he got stressed. So whatever you do to release stress, just make sure that you have an outlet for it. I went on Indeed.com. Indeed.com is, is, a, is a web crawler that looks for jobs that are posted. And so I put in $50,000 jobs. So these are jobs that all pay at least $50,000 in Manitowoc. So we're not talking about going across the country. We're not talking about moving to Los Angeles or New York. We're talking about staying right in this area. And, and as I looked, there, and this was yesterday or the day before, I forgot which one, there were 48 jobs listed. And, and you can see there's, there's two rivers, there's Manitowoc, there's Manitowoc, and, and, and the postings are there. I will advise you that some of these you would not qualify for, for example, as soon as you come out of high school. Some of them you might, but some of them you might not. So what do you do in order to get these jobs? Well, you, you're, of course, I'm an instructor at LTC, so I'll throw a little ad in. You know, we have this supply chain program. We do very well at, at teaching the students. Our placement rate is very, very high on the supply chain. As a matter of fact, during the year, I have companies call me begging me to find someone to send to them. And I have a company right now that I'm working with that wants to try and do a co-op. And I got an, an email from them yesterday saying that they're desperate. You know, please, please find somebody. So jobs are out there. You're going to need some training, whether it's formal education like LTC or whether it's going to work at one of these places. Say you go to work at Lakeside Foods and you start as a material handler. Well, you may work your way up to become a buyer. So it depends on what you want. So let's talk about transportation for a little bit. So it's the movement of goods and services, people, animals, blah, 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 by rail, road, air, sea, or pipeline. We're gonna talk about each one of these specifically. So rail, um, this happens to be the Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul and Pacific Railroad, which my father worked for for 20 something years. So that's why I threw this particular picture in. But when you talk about moving by rail, the things that move by rail are huge commodities that don't have to get there in a very short period of time normally. The problem with rails is they own, the, the rail cars can only follow the rails. So it's not like it's gonna pull up in front of your house and deliver something. So if you're working in this industry, you have to think about where you're gonna deliver it to, um, how long it's gonna to take to get there. Jobs in the railroad industry, you know, they've cut some of them out. They used to have a lot more people on a train than they do now but there's engineers, um, there's the people that schedule the trains, there's people that determine what the loads are gonna be. And here's what most people think of when they think of transportation, is they think of the trucks hauling, hauling the material. And, and you could, as part of transportation, become an over the road truck driver, or you can become a local truck driver. You know, they make a lot of good money. Um, every job that you look at is gonna have its benefits and its drawbacks. If you're an over the road driver, you're gonna be gone from home for quite a bit of time normally because they like for you to be in the truck. They like for you to be driving. Sometimes some truck drivers that I've talked to, it seems like the company tries to keep you farther and farther away from your home, but you have some control over that, especially now. Um, there's independent truck drivers that own their own rigs. There's a lot of demand for the truck drivers. And it's not just the semi tractor trailer, there's also couriers, so you could have vans, you could have um, panel trucks, you could have a number of different things that all fall into the road transportation. And the good thing about road transportation is that you can go to a person's house. You can go from the rail yard, for example, to a person's house. Air, and I picked this one because this is Amazon's own fleet. So, oh, excuse me. So it's become so popular shipping stuff by air and there's such a demand for it that some companies have started their own, their own airlines. 
um, UPS, DHL, um, FedEx, they have their own planes. And so if you got into the air industry, again, a number of different jobs, you could strive to be a pilot, a co-pilot, you could be a ground crew, you could work at the airport. There's just so many different jobs that fall into that transportation realm. By sea, and this is Maersk Line. Maersk actually has the largest ship in the world. And I don't know if it, I don't think it's the one that got stuck in the Suez Canal. But if you remember that episode from, must be about two months ago, I guess, this huge ship called the Evergreen got stuck in the Suez Canal and they couldn't get anything past it. So they couldn't unload anything. And as you look at this picture, you see all these like little boxes, but those aren't really little boxes. Those are the size of trailers on, on semi-trailers. So they're 50 foot long and 10 foot wide and 10 foot high. And that's where all your, your um, goods that are being delivered are coming from. And recently, if you've watched the news, there's a number of these giant ships that are docked off the coast of California, um, Oregon, and they can't get unloaded fast enough because there's not enough people there. So the government has intervened and helped to increase the number of hours that they're unloading these container ships. But if you didn't get your Christmas present, it could be because it's on one of these ships stuck out there. Pipeline. Pipeline is a little bit different. Pipeline is very specific. So you can have an oil pipeline, you can have a gas pipeline, but it's one product. You don't switch back and forth from one product to another. Been a lot of controversy about the pipelines. Keystone Pipeline was coming across some Indian territory. It was sacred. So there were, there were a lot of things went on with that. The jobs in pipeline are, are more scarce. Um, people obviously install the pipelines. People monitor the maintenance on the pipeline. People schedule how much is going to go through the pipeline. But it's a lot rarer than the other sources of transportation we talked about. Transportation jobs. I looked it up there, and again, this was just Indeed.com, a real quick search. There were over 45 transportation jobs that paid $50,000 or more in Manitowoc. Delivery driver for, for U.S. PAC contractor. J.B. Hunt is looking for a local truck driver, uh, facilities, and, facilities and transportation manager. But there's a lot of opportunities out there. So whether you want to go into logistics or you want to go into transportation, there's a lot of opportunities. You have to figure out what you want to do to determine how to get there, whether you take a job and get trained for it or whether you get, as I said, the formal training. So that's about it for my presentation, unless there's any questions or we want to hold questions until the end. Thank you so much, Jim. I did just get a message that Jeremiah will be unable to attend today's session. So I'm glad you were able to cover a lot of information on both the logistics and the transportation side. If anyone does have questions, please put it into the chat and I'll ask Jim for that. While we're waiting for any questions, though, it was interesting the information that you shared, Jim. It really opened up my eyes to what is available I'm almost 50 years old, and I wish I would have known all of these other opportunities when I was still in high school to realize that there were more opportunities, more options available to me. If I was thinking that, yes, this is something that I want to learn more about, not quite sure yet if this is the type of coursework or classwork that I do want to pursue, what kind of classes and or extracurricular activities, do you suggest I start taking now in high school to prepare me for after graduation, whether I go into college to study this full time or go on to a job right away? Take classes that will support what you want to go into. So for example, if you're going to work in the office, you're more than likely going to be working with a spreadsheet. So take a computer class or, or you can take Excel, you can take Word. Um, those are going to be valuable to you no matter what you do. Um, so make sure you train on those. Math, I know people normally don't like math, but get your basic math skills down because you're always going to use them for the rest of your life. So do those. As far as other things that you can do, there's, um, oh, let me think for a second. 
There's some organizations that support the supply chain program, and they're out of Sheboygan. Um, I think there's one in Manitowoc, but you can take a look at joining those. And normally for students, they let you join for free. And they, and they have these events where they'll go to, for example, a factory. So I know they went to Burger Boat not very long ago and watched them build the yachts and they told them all about building the thing. So, so the people that were there got the opportunity to learn what it takes to build the yachts, what the jobs were available there and uh, talk about those things. Thank you so much, Jim. You're welcome. When you were talking, my mind, I, I, I start going in all different directions. So when you're talking things with the railroad or the truck drivers where you need a special license, uh, commercial driver's license, even things of taking care of and maintaining those types of vehicles. So you need the mechanics to take care and make sure that your trucks are driving properly. A diesel mechanic is very different from a regular car mechanic. Being a maintenance engineer on the ships, on the railroads, on the airlines, even on the airline, uh, we, the example you had when you were prime for Amazon, my mind started thinking, ooh, graphic designer, painters. I never realized probably into the last few years, how close all of these different industries are tied together that you wouldn't normally think that, oh, this is connected with this to this to this to this. And I think your description really started tying it together. Oh, thank you. Uh, one option that I would like to suggest to everyone is to start looking at a website called ONET Online. O-N-E-T-O-N-L-I-N-E, -N -E, ONET Online. This is a great website where you can start looking at the skills that you have and what types of positions are open for it. So with the, the buyers or the materials handler, materials manager, Oftentimes, I, I'm seeing this with our customers that come in now that they are so focused on a specific job title of what they're doing and in a specific industry. And what's great about this website and what Jim talked about, all of these roles, they can have different titles for the position, but you're using the same skills. And ONET Online helps to suggest different industries that you may never thought about. So you could think, oh, I'm gonna go into supply management. I wanna be into a specific type of manufacturing industry and you know, molding and filtration. I worked in a manufacturer uh, that produced um, that, the molding and uh, filtration products for about 10 years. And, after that, okay, where do you go? Well, we had people who went to metal, the company ended up closing and the people went then to metal fabrication facilities. Uh, I mean, they just started branching out into all of these different areas. Well, if you're, you're in that one niche, you don't normally think to go beyond that. So don't close your mind to a specific industry uh, if you are open to these types of positions because there is a whole world that is ready and needing you right now as well. Um, we've got that backlog. Jim talked about it with the ships. We can't get the containers unloaded. Every industry that has a touch on every part of it from the cargo containers going onto the ship, being unloaded, going to a truck, being put into a store, um, being unloaded. We are in need of workers in every single aspect on that. Jim, we have about five minutes remaining. Do you have final thoughts? I've not received any questions yet in the chat. Do you have okay. any final thoughts to share with our students here today? Well, I was, I was thinking about what you were talking about, about how interconnected things are. And within the last few days, I heard that if you have a used car, check the value of it, because it may be worth a lot more than you thought. And I thought, well, why would that be? And the reason is they can't get the chips for the new cars. So something as simple as one small chip, so like a square inch chip that goes into a car, they can't get them, they can't source them. So they're not producing as many cars. So now the used cars are much more valuable. So that's how 
how interconnected everything is. And, and one thing that I would encourage, if I were back in high school again, and I was thinking about what I was going to do in the future, and believe me, that was a long time ago I was in high school. <laughs> Matter of fact, this would be my 50-year reunion. So, <laughs> But one thing I encourage people is don't get drawn in too much just by the money. When you go looking for a job, make sure that you look at the total totality of the job. So when I say that, look at your benefits. I worked at one place where the copay on insurance was $12,000. Well, that really cuts into your pay. I mean, if you're making $15 an hour and you have to pay $12,000 copay and insurance, and younger people no, don't normally think that they're gonna get sick and have to use the insurance, but it happens sometimes. So, so look around. And there's so many opportunities for you right now. And, and I, I, I applaud the younger people coming into the workforce because you're driving something that we never did and that's a work-life balance. So make sure you keep up with the work-life balance. You know, in, in my day, there were a lot of times where I worked 90 and 100 hours per week. You know, so the work-life balance wasn't there. And, and now I've, I've read a study recently where if the younger generation doesn't get the work-life balance, they'll switch jobs and go somewhere else. And, and you can certainly find the work-life balance in the supply chain program. You know, there's so many different types of jobs. I talked about working in the office. If you want to work hands-on, you know, there's people that stack boxes. There's people that drive fork trucks. I mean, there's just so many different things that you can do. It's, it's such a huge field. It's difficult to tell people, well, here's the jobs that are in it because there's just so many of them. But I certainly encourage people to take a look at the supply chain. In my classes, most of my students are people who have already been in the industry for a little while and they're looking to get promoted. And, and all of them speak very highly of the types of jobs that they have. So if you have to start out at the bottom, start out at the bottom because pretty soon you'll rise and you'll see it. Thank you so much, Jim. I definitely concur. When you start working, if you start at the bottom, if you're that good, hard worker, you've got a strong work ethic, the promotions will come, the money will come, the additional training will come. You have to work hard for it, but it does give you its rewards in the end. We are almost out of time here today. I did not see any questions in the chat, so I'm going to end our discussion here today. Jim, I want to thank you so much for your time today. And I would also like to thank our students for giving their time and attention to Jim. Hopefully this gets you started thinking a little bit about a career in transportation or in logistics, the supply chain. I wish you luck on your future career development. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you again, Jim. Thank you.